Hi guys, and Darren here, and welcome to this video on how to interpret a scatter plot. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Third video of this particular series, and what are we doing? Yep, we're looking at scatter plots. In a previous video, if you remember, we have looked at how to create a scatter plot. Yes? Now we're going to work on what to do with it, because our brain loves data. Now, if you haven't already done so, you can do me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yep, you don't have to have notifications. Good if you can, because you'll know when I release videos, but otherwise it just lets me know you're watching. Never going to be rich, and certainly never going to be famous. There's also, as you can see above, mathsguru.com. Free to sign up, downloadable notes, exam questions, time-coded videos, all in the right order for textbooks, um, and I'm doing what I can to help you out. All right, And also, if you can let your mates know, that would be great. So as I say here, what is this video about? Well, we've had the idea of drawing a scatter plot, but we need to try and work out how we can describe it. And I hate to tell you this, the bad news, ladies and gentlemen, is you're gonna to have to start writing stuff. Who said this was English? No one said anyone. But yes, uh, later on in year 12, if you're over here in Australia, you're gonna to have to describe this stuff. And the good news is, there are three ways of describing it. We're gonna learn about direction, form, and strength. So, yep, in that previous video, this was the scatter plot we ended up. So we had this data here, and we learned how to use our CAS, to create that graph. But generally speaking, just how would you describe that? If you if you were with your best mate now, your mum or dad or whoever you live at home with, and you said, oh, I'm about to describe that, how would you do it? Outside of the color of it being blue, and outside of the dots sort of looking like some sort of, you know, I can't even tell you what it looks like. It's really, really hard to use language unless we've told you. So this lesson is going to be about the language. Job done. As I say, you're going to have to write statistical reports. If you continue this later on, you have to write. And the good news is, with further maths, we actually give you a scaffold. We actually sort of give you a frame. And we say, write this, say this, do this, put that number in there, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. You put it in your summary book, job done. Life is awesome and easy. And the particular writing frame we give you will have reference to something called direction, form, and strength. And you're going to say, are you going to get to the good stuff? <laughs> yeah, this is the good stuff. Here we go. So let's look at the direction of an association. So when we describe our scatter plot, we're looking at using words and particular words. And they are a positive association, as you can see here, a negative association, and no association. Yes. So in this situation, we've already looked previously at, um, at uh, sort of gradients. And we know that that's a positive gradient. That's a negative gradient. Now, obviously, that's a gradient of zero, and that's a gradient of infinity. But that doesn't necessarily help us with scatter plots. I'm very, very sure we're not going to get something like this, or something like this from real world data. So what we might get is something looking like this, for example. So how would you describe those dots now? Well, I would say there is a positive association. The points seem to be going up, so there is a positive association. I suppose if we look at this one here, what do we notice? There is a absolutely negative association. So one of the examples in the previous video was the age of a vehicle and its uh, price, if I was going to sell it. Yes, because as a car gets older, it loses money, it depreciates. Uh, what do we say here? So we could have age and height, yeah? Now, this one here is probably the next one. Can we see any pattern in this data? That's, I suppose, an association and pattern would be useful. None whatsoever. So that one down there would suggest there is no association whatsoever. I suppose this one here is a bit of a trick because you think, oh, Oh, there is an association it seems to be doing this yes it is but actually we're looking at positive negative or no association so for positive they have to all be going up negative they have to be heading downwards and that one there believe it or not is no association so let's have a look and have a look can we see what we good I don't know what that was all about. Can we have a look at these examples and see what we would describe these as classify each of them as exhibiting a positive negative or no association where there is an association to describe the direction of the association in the scatter plot and what it means in terms of the variables involved. Now that's really, really important. So here, this one here, I think hopefully you all know is a positive association. This one here is a negative association. And hopefully you would notice here, that means there is no association. Now the question goes on to say, describe what it means in terms of the variables involved now. The great thing is, is when we have a positive association, we use the word increase twice. 
Now what I'm going to say here is we would describe this, so this one here, so let's call it number one. We would say that has a positive association, i.e., don't know what that means, it's Latin I believe. Anyway, if you know, leave a comment below. Number one, we would say that as time increases, my mark increases. Notice what I've done there. As time increases, my mark increases, or their marks increases. We're using the word increase and increase, because as this is going up, that one there is going up. Let's look at the negative one now. Let's call this number two. How would we describe this? Well, we would actually say, as age increases, price decreases. Because as the age is increasing, the price is actually going down. Now, the hint here is we always use the EV and we say it's increasing. The, the, the explanatory variable is always increasing. So the good news here is you've already got half your sentence, yeah? The RV is either increasing, decreasing, or there's no association. And I think for this one here, we would just say there is no association. What about the form of the association? Yeah, now, I don't know, you talk about form. Oh, you're in good form today. I don't know what that means in maths. But the form is basically whether the data is linear or nonlinear. Now, linear, as I say to people, has the word line, <laughs> line R, line R, right? That means, is the data looking like it's a straight line? Or is it non-linear, which basically means it's curving or something. So here, we would say that that data was linear. Now, lots of people say, but it's not in a straight line. Well, what I'm saying is it's got to be sort of linear. As it Does it look like it's going in a line? This one here is definitely seeming to curve. And so that one there would be non-linear. And do you notice we're building up for that original example to turn around and say, well, can we explain that one now? All right, so in this situation, let's have a look at my examples. What do we reckon? Classify the form of the association as linear or nonlinear. Well, this one here seems to be going up in a line. So I'd say that one there is linear. And this one here actually seems to be curving. Now that dotted line I've drawn is actually going to become really important to you later on in different videos. But this one here is nonlinear. And I draw the dotted line just to show me um, whether it's linear or nonlinear. Now, the last part of this video is the strength of the association, you know, how strong it is. Yeah, I don't know what that was all about either. And when we talk about the association or the strength, we're asking how close the dots are. Yes, and generally speaking, how close they are to a straight line, but we'll come back to that later. So we use the three words, strong, moderate, or weak. Now, later on, there is a table that helps you decide specifically what the data is. But for general maths, we're just going to look for the moment at sort of a, a, a value judgment. We're just going to look at it and go, oh, yeah, that's all right. So let's look at three examples of strong first. This one here, as you notice, says it's a strong positive association. Notice now what we're doing. We're starting to link the words together. It's strong because the points are close together. It's positive because it's going up. We could also say here that that was a linear association. So realistically, that's a strong, positive, linear association. Write that in an exam. You get three marks, job done, very happy person. This one here is also a strong, positive association. The points seem to be heading up as we increase one way. We are increasing the other, but it's a non-linear association. So a strong positive non-linear. And again, here, strong negative association. And again, I would say that that was generally speaking a linear association. So I'd probably have gone one step further and said strong negative linear association. Give me the marks. Thanks very much. So we've done strong. What about moderate? Well, moderate is you can sort of see where the line is. They're a little bit spread out around it. But the general idea is you can still see that there is a, a sort of a way to go. So again, moderate. So this is a moderate, positive, linear association. Oh, we're getting a little bit like, mm, but probably. This one here, moderate. I would suggest that's some sort of a curve. And again, moderate, negative, linear. Ooh, maybe, maybe not. But we can see the idea now that the dots are a little bit further apart. What about this one here? A weak, 
positive association. Now you're going to look at this and say, well, hold on a moment, that actually looks like there's no association. Well, again, this is a value call. And what I'm saying is in later videos, we actually give you the tools to help you work out whether this is or is not um, an actual uh, weak, strong or moderate association. And again, weak, this seems to be heading upwards. It's a lot further away from that dotted line. So it's a weak, positive, probably linear association. This one here, a weak, positive, non-linear association. And again, a weak, negative, linear association. Now, the good news is, as I said, if you head to mathsguru.com, you can download these notes exactly with what I've just drawn on them. And you can write all over them now saying, ah, oh, dude wrote the dotted line to give us an idea of, you know, lines of best fit or predictions uh, coming up later. But it's there for you. But otherwise, I think that's pretty much the end of this lesson. Let's just go back to this one here. And how would we now describe that? Well, I think that is a strong, positive linear association. Yeah, so we've got a strong, positive linear association, which suggests as time increases, Mark increases too. And there we go. We're done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Tell your mates, please. I'd love to help as many people. Um, tell your teachers because, you know, there's always this resource they can use for their lessons. Sign up to YouTube, head over to Maths Guru. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again in another video. Take care, guys. Stay safe. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Yes, this is the end of another video. If you haven't already done so, can you click on my subscribe button? Yes, it doesn't mean anything other than the fact that I know that you are watching. Yes, it's greatly appreciated. Otherwise, I feel like I'm sitting here just talking to myself. And then, yes, there is mathsguru.com, of which you can see a still of now. And what is over there? Well, all the videos ordered by textbook, ordered by topic. You can search for the videos. You can download notes time codes, exam questions, and so, so much more coming up. Yeah, it's absolutely free to join. So I'm done. Thank you very much. I hope to see you in another video. Give me a shout out to your mates if you can. I just want to make sure that everyone finds maths interesting and easy. All right, take care, guys. See you again. Bye. -bye. Stay safe.